Hello everyone, welcome to pipeenge.com. HydroTest is still considered as the most reliable and effective way to prove the integrity of a new pipeline after construction or existing pipeline that changes operating conditions. To test above grade piping, it could be fairly straightforward. However, to test the long distance buried pipeline, it could be a very complex operation. The entire pipeline can be tested as one section, or depending on the length and elevation change, the pipeline can be divided into different test segments. The test pressure for each test segment shall be within the allowable range. At the same time, we should double check the water usage for each segment to make sure we have enough water, we have developed a great tool for you to plan your hydro test. Now, let's use an example to show you how to use it. So, let's put some pipe data first. Let's say we have a 24 inch pipeline and it's a thin wall pipe. pipe. All we need to do is to select the drop down to 24 inch and we have a wall thickness drop down as well to help you to select the wall thickness. We have provided those typical wall thickness values. You can double check the wall thickness. But if, if your line pipe wall thickness is not the typical value, what we can do is to go to custom and we can manually put in 24 inch for OD and let's say we put a quarter a quarter inch as the wall thickness great let's then put the line pipe grade so let's say we use um grade b pipe so the grade uh smice is 35,000 psi great then the next two inputs are heavy wall pipe wall thickness and a heavy wall pipe grade. So if the entire line pipe along the test segment is the same pipe material thickness and, and, and then we don't need to do anything here, it's optional in, inputs. If we know there is a heavy wall sections, maybe it's HDD, maybe it's road crossing or river crossing, then we can put something in to account it for the heavy wall, um, maybe at the low point. So here, all we need to do is the tick to activate a, a manual input cell. And then we can manually put the data. Let's say this heavy wall pipe is 0.375 inch. And the pipe grade, let's say we put 42 pipe. Okay, the next input is very important for hydro test is maximum operating pressure. So this will drive the, the test of pressure selection along with the pipe spec. So for this example, let's assume the design pressure for the system is 275 PSI. And below you can see quite a few lines to show the pressure at different conditions. For example, in the first of four, we can decide what's going to be the pressure value for 110% um, MOP, which is maximum operating pressure, or 125%, 140%, or 150%. Usually, the minimal test pressure required for stress test or leak test is determined by percentage of MOP. The next of four pressure are pressures at a different percentage of spice. Usually the upper limit of your test segment, also uh, saying maximum test pressure, is determined by the percentage of spice. A lot of times we can assume 110% spice is the upper limit, or sometimes you wanna be a little, a little bit more conservative you assume 100% smice, then 
the pressure showing here can be a great reference for you to check your tesla pressure to make sure they're within the limit great come to this side we have a whole bunch of uh, parameters for users to put to determine the pipe length and the pipe adivations. So for this example, let's assume the test segment upstream point ch change, which is the starting point, is zero. And uh, the downstream point change is saying this pipe is five miles long. So we can put in, let's say, 26,400 foot. And a test segment upstream point elevation, which is starting point elevation, we can have a generic, uh, let's say, 500 foot. Um, the high point, though, the high point is the highest point um, of this test segment. Um, it sometimes can be the upstream point or downstream point, but it could be right in the middle. So let's say the high point elevation for our example is 900 feet. And similarly for low point elevation, um, we have to check the whole pipe pipeline alignment and the profile, make sure we actually find the low point elevation. And um, this low point, let's assume is 200 feet. Instrumentation elevation is the elevation we actually set up the test instrument or the test head. A lot of times this either in upstream, starting or end point, um, or we find a suitable location in the middle. Usually this is determined by the, um, by the uh, uh, workspace available for all the equipment and, uh, and maybe test trader, data van for engineers to, to stay. Um, let's say for this example, we, we can say this is um, roughly at the elevation of 600, okay? And similarly, test segment downstream point elevation is the end elevation. It should be between 200 and 900, let's say is 500 as well. Once we finish all the, the pipe profile and length inputs, let's take a look at the, the first result section. We can see we have testament length, five miles, as we put it in. And we have test segment volume. This is the empty pipe volume that have with zero pressure, obviously. So uh, we have we have a tape here saying that a segment of volume ignores heavy wall pipe volume reduction. So if we have inputs about heavy wall pipe, and that that's usually a, a fairly short section com compared to the entire length. So the the volume reduction is negligible in this case. And then we have to calculate the water volume for a pressure increase. So what it means is when we pressure up this system, the pipe turns to expand and therefore to achieve the test pressure, we need to inject the more water volume to fill the, the void created by the pipe expansion. So that's why we have this volume per pressure number to help you to decide um, per PSI or per KPA, uh, how many cubic feet or how many gallon, how much gun we're talking about. And uh, the estimated squeeze volume, um, this is based on 110% So I say we assume the system eventually gonna be pressurized to 110% SMICE in this case is 802, um, then what's the total volume required? So when you plan a hydro test, we have to plan for the, for the squeeze volume. And the last one in this section is the 0.2% offset volume for PV plot. PV plot means pressure volume plotting. 
um, sometimes when we pressure pressurize the pipe over 90% of SMIS, sometimes it requires to, uh, to do the pressure volume plotting. Sometimes it's also called yield plotting to prove that the pipe um, it will not ex experience the plastic uh, deformation. Uh, if we do that, then we need an additional volume based on that. This 0.2% offset is, uh, is a typical uh, offset boundary uh, we have to keep within. So this is an additional volume that uh, what we need during the, during the planning. So now, the next section is to help us to determine what a test pressure we should use. As you can see, we have a minimal stress test pressure uh, scenario and also have a maximal stress test pressure scenario. So the minimal test pressure we will see for our pipeline system is going to be at the high point. And similarly, the maximal test pressure we will see will be at the low point of the pipeline system because that's where we will see the maximum static head. So usually we will run both cases to determine a reasonable range that can help us to set the test pressure. So for this example, uh, I'm going to assume that the minimal test pressure is 125% of the MOP and the maximal test pressure is the pressure that costs 100% SMITES. So if we go back up, we have all the reference pressures here, right? So we have 125% MOP, which is 344 PSI, and then we have 100% SMITES is 729. And this is what we're gonna use as a benchmark. So for the minimal stress test pressure, the high point pressure, we want to put something higher than 125% MOP, which is 344, with a reasonable buffer. So in this case, I decided to use 370 PSI. And on the other hand, for maximal stress test pressure at the low point, I want to put something less than 729 PSI with a reasonable buffer. So in this case, I put in 700 PSI. So if we put, put in both case, and if we select a test pressure in between of these two cases, that will make sure that the test pressure along the whole test segment is within the allowable. So if you are the test engineer, you can keep an eye on the, um, the pressure gauge at the, at the, the test location where, and, and you make sure the instrumentation pressure should be between 500 PSI and 527 PSI. Similarly, if we require a separate uh, leak test, depends on which code you, you come or comply with. Usually, uh, we will do a leak test followed by a strength test. Um, so the leak test usually happens at the, a lower pressure. So in this case, let's assume we have a leak test as a minimal test pressure is 110% MOP, and the maximum test pressure for leak test is still 100% SMITES. So in this case, we go back up and we find 110% MOP is 303. So here I want to put the high point during the leak test uh, is 315 PSI. And for the maximum pressure, it's going to be the same as the strength test is 700 PSI. Then um, similarly, you just need to pick a leak test pressure between these two cases. And then your uh, overall test pressure will be within the allowable. Now, once you selected the strength test pressure, 
and the leak test pressure that should have enough information for you to plan your hydro test. Uh, you can also save your calculations uh, using the report function. Uh, you can click on it and then you can put a project name, dates, revision, developer, approver, reviewer, however you want to do it. And you can choose to download it, save it in your computer or open it. And I just want to open it for you to take a look at it. So you will have all the, uh, the pipe data, pipe profile, you put it in, uh, all the volume you calculate it, and uh, minimal test pressure, maximum test pressure, you can use this to uh, do the field adjustment, make sure that as long as that the actual test pressure is within the two cases. Similarly for leak test and uh, maximum leak, leak test and the minimal leak test. Um, this, you can print it out and bring it to the site. Uh, one more thing I would like to point it out is for those uh, engineers uh, outside the US, uh, if you use a metric system, um, and uh, you can simply click the tab on the top to activate the metric system tool, uh, and then everything should be converted to, to metric units. And uh, so that's everything about this great tool. Uh, for your hydro test planning and uh, please let us know if you have any questions you can contact us uh, through uh, the email shown on our website you can visit our site uh, to use other great tools um, thank you very much